Well, congratulations to you both on the film. Uh, I had such fun with it. I think I learned a few new expressions as well. <laughs> the film actually says that um, the Little Hampton letters have remained pretty much unknown until now, or at least their story. So how did you come across it and why did you think it would make a good film? I think there's been a bit of recent history and a recent trend for historians to look at um, ordinary people and not just focusing on prime ministers and kings and queens. So that was what excited me about it, was that it was a period film, but it wasn't like a lot of period films in that it wasn't about big country houses and obviously there's lots of swearing in it. And what I, what no. I, what I liked was the letters. I always say that was the thing, the moment where I, I really wanted to to write the story was the letters were so funny. And so and um, and also I felt that there was a really interesting, complicated character behind them who had written the letters. And and then it, that's what drew me in. And then the story from there is a real caper and um, a sort of mystery. And um, it's exciting but ridiculous at the same time. Yeah. I mean, the language, I guess, is um, an extra member of the cast, really. You've got that wonderful combination of words that we know and a wonderfully eccentric turn of phrase as well. Yeah. Is that language purely taken from the letters or was there a bit of creative licence going on there a as well? Of, a bit of both. <laughs> I'd, I'd say that the most eccentric bits of the letters are quoted from the letters. Um, I don't know if I can quote them here. <laughs> But they, but they are, they, they are real, and that was what, that, like you say, the turn of phrase was so idiosyncratic, um, and I, I really, I fell in love with them. I did. I was really, um, I, I was really excited to write it, um, but I did also add some of my own, just I couldn't help myself because they were good fun to write. Get, so get when, you, when you were adding your own, did you have anybody to bounce it off? I'm, ju I'm just sort of trying to imagine a sort of brainstorming session and you're all sort of coming up with these crazy phrases. No, it wasn't really like that. And to be honest, the, the most time that we spent on the film, uh, after, you know, after the first drafts, Thea and I, and even on, on my own um, before then, was making it work for the characters and for the story. That weirdly is, is the thing you spend. Writing the letters and the, the jokes is sort of the easiest or the f most fun bit and the the hardest things were trying to plot it in a way that was um credible and exciting and making the characters um complex and uh you know sympathetic yeah and be and understanding the person behind the letter writing mm. and the need for it um and what it is also to receive those yeah. and you've got two fantastic lead actors in Olivia Coleman and, and Jesse Buckley um, who know each other and have got the most fantastic sense of humour both of them. They do. Just how much corpsing went on on set? Really quite a lot of corpsing <laughs> went on on set. Um, it was everything you can imagine making this film with those two. They are whilst they are disciplined and professional and uh, have an extraordinary background already they're filthy, they're potty mouthed they're very rude. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of jokes on set. There were a lot of, yeah, mishaps. Everything that you hope happened, happened. Did they come up with any of their own, Olivia what should we did. say, bits of invective? <laughs> they both did. Yeah. Yes, they did, actually. Did that make yes, them they, into the film? They, yes, they, they absolutely did. Yeah, both did. did. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. And with Jessie, there were some physical things, that ideas that she came up with by herself. Uh, that have also remained in the film. They have. Yeah. It's a very British comedy, um, but I wondered how much you had in the back of your mind the classic Ealing comedies, because certainly with the soundtrack, it made me think of the Lady Killers. That's fantastic. That's really lovely. I'm a big fan. I, abs I love the Ealing comedies, um, but we never... Um, we, you and I never discussed it, but I... Theo would have to speak on that. Yeah, no, I mean, that was a given in, a, in one sense, but we didn't aim to recreate any of that. But I, for me, that the, the rhythm of the speech, the dialogue, is probably where that comes from, most of all. But it's interesting that you said that about the music as well. Mm. Um, yeah, well, maybe, I mean, it was definitely, it's innately, it's so much part of our cinematic history, isn't it? 
So inevitably, mm. it's going to be there. And it's villagey, and it be- it begins yeah, small, small world, but it, it, it gets big, and then it ends with a kind of sting, which is there is a kind of Ealing comedy DNA there, which I hadn't actually thought about before, but it's definitely. Yeah, it does feel a bit like that. So how much do the two of you swear? Because let's face it, there are times when only a really good curse will do. Yes, that's true. No, I definitely, um, you know, at home with the kids, with the, with the family. You I'm do awful, it a lot, I'm don't awful. you? Um, no, it, I think I do. I think I do have recourse to swear sometimes, but I try to limit it. I do swear. My swearing got a lot worse in the making of this film. I'm now Can't in recovery why. and right. pulling back yeah, from that. Yeah. yeah, you're in a bad place. Oh, what, what yeah. in the making of it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll recover. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank, Thank you, you so, Thanks much. so much.